Hi, my name is Pilar, and I'll be presenting our paper on soft tissue characterization using a robotic medical precaution device and predictive models. First of all, what is medical precaution? Medical precaution is a widely used clinical technique to examine the condition of a patient's underlying tissues and organs. In this procedure, the physician percusses the thorax or abdomen and listens to their acoustic responses. What makes this technique so attractive is its ability to provide information on the presence of air or fluid in organs, and even their size or consistency. It is one of the basic clinical examination techniques. It is quick to perform, and it helps clinicians decide whether more sophisticated or costly examinations are required. However, although it is a common medical practice, there is a limited understanding of its dynamics. This, alongside human limitations, can lead to misdiagnosis even among skilled professionals. There are some key factors contributing to this. First, it is impossible for humans not to introduce variability to this manual technique. Inconsistencies in posture, force, or impact duration may lead to different percussion nodes and therefore might affect diagnosis. Second, the human hearing range is limited, and some key acoustic features might be missed. And third, there is not enough information on what acoustic features characterize specific tissue structures or pathologies. So, how can robots help? Robotic devices could help standardize the mechanical percussion action and are able to detect tiny changes in pitch that the human ear cannot perceive. Most importantly, new signal analysis and machine learning techniques can allow for better decision making, expanding our knowledge on percussion models. This project presents the development of a robotic percussion device, as well as the sensory models for the analysis of the tissues of acoustic responses. The first step in this project was to develop the robotic percussion device. We wanted the device to replicate a clinician's natural wrist movement, specifically how a clinician loosens the wrist to preserve the natural restitution dynamics of the percussed tissue. This was achieved by modeling the human arm as a two-link system with a compliant wrist joint. Joint torques were generated through extension springs, and the mathematical formula describing the system is shown in the slide. As seen in the animation, when the first link in red hits a hard stop, all of the kinetic energy of the body is transferred to the second link in blue, resulting in the end effector tapping the surface of the tissue. In the bottom right animation, you can see how we translated the model into the physical mechanism. To validate this device, we compare its impact force to what is expected from a physician performing the technique. The appropriate impact torque was estimated to be 8.3 to 12.6 newton meter from Rouse's study, and the device torque was 8.6 newton meter, a value that aligns with the existing literature. Therefore, we concluded that the robotic device could be used in percussion studies as an accurate representation of a physician's percussion technique. After this, we proceeded to evaluate its potential to determine the state or composition of underlying tissues. To do so, we conducted two experiments to evaluate the system's capability to detect tissue anomalies or perform complex characterization. In the first experiment, we evaluated its capability to detect anomalies embedded in silicon phantoms, mimicking a human abdomen. Our main focus was to understand whether acoustic data could provide information on the presence of tissue anomalies and their depth, as well as identifying key frequency bands where this information could be extracted from. For the experiment setup, we used the robotic device to precast onto silicon phantoms. The resulting acoustic response was collected through a contact microphone which was placed on the phantom surface and recorded at a frequency of 44.1 kHz. The gathered data was then trimmed to a total of 1,688 individual percussion events between both silicon phantoms. The crop and aligned percussion events were analyzed through one-dimensional continuous wavelet transforms under coefficient scalograms, which provided information on the spectrotemporal characteristics of the signals. 
A statistical analysis shown a very strong correlation between the changes in the spectrotemporal domains and the nodule depth, especially in the frequency range of 175 to 400 hertz. To better understand these results, we can zoom into this frequency range. On the screen, you can see the average coefficient scalograms for far and close nodule locations. The graph shown a dampening effect on the frequency intensities caused by the presence of a hard nodule. The closer the nodule is to the phantom surface, the faster the frequency intensities dies, just as illustrated in the right closed nodule graph. These results prove we can detect tissue anomalies and we can even determine their depth. But what about more complex tissue compositions? For our second experiment, we made 15 different silicon phantoms containing a flesh organ half. In these samples, the white silicon represents the flesh or abdomen, and the colored silicon mimics different organ consistencies. The thickness of the organ layer in these samples also vary from 15 to 35 mm. To record acoustic data, a similar setup to experiment 1 was used. After pre-processing the recordings, a total of 7,500 time-aligned percussion samples were obtained, with each half of the phantoms being percussed 250 times. Due to the large amount of data, data reduction techniques were used. First, the number of data points in the scalograms was resized by a factor of 0.01. .01. Then, further reduction was achieved by generating optimal data clusters. To extract these special features, Gaussian mixture modeling was used, resulting in five key Gaussian distributions. With this, instead of running the neural networks on the entire dataset, we can tell them what specific regions to explore. The resulting classification model uses the Gaussian distributions and scalograms to predict the sample labels. These labels include three individual ones, such as sample type, which tells you about what area was percussed, uh, the thickness of the organ layer, and also the silicon mixture used for the organ layer. As well, we have a composite label which combines the information from all other three labels. The outcome of the model show very promising results with an accuracy of 97.5% when predicting the composite labels from data from all five Gaussian distributions. We can also learn more about the behavior of the tissues when looking at the accuracy of individual distributions. For example, while the highest accuracy is usually achieved by considering all distributions, the depth label has a mean square error that is significantly lower when considering only the distribution one. This could imply that lower frequencies close in time to the percussion event may contain vital data to predict organ size. These results prove that it is possible to predict the underlying tissue state by analyzing the spectrotemporal characteristics of the acoustic responses to percussion. Moreover, by dividing the data into localized clusters, we can infer and even identify what audio features are relevant for the study of specific tissue parameters. While these are encouraging results, it is also important to remember that the reality of percussion is more complex. Percussion examinations are far from a controlled environment, and the size and structural composition of the phantoms are just a simplification of the complex human abdominal region. It is possible that some of the detected acoustic features will not be present in a patient, so further studies on human participants are needed. On the other hand, this research provides an initial exploration of the opportunities that AI-driven robotics can bring to the medical field. The successful development of such a device could propel the implementation of more frequent and remote diagnoses that can support saturated healthcare systems. It could provide an accessible medical platform for those with reduced mobility, such as the elderly, who struggle to attend hospital visits. But most importantly, it could prevent major pathologies from evolving through early identification and detection. Thank you very much for your attention. We hope that you enjoyed the presentation and please let us know if you have any questions.